Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to the Detroit Lions podcast. This is Too Fast For Yo. And after live streaming this on Twitch, it is going to be uploaded to YouTube and in a more edited down version. Now, this video is going to be talking about the Detroit Lions versus Seattle Seahawks. Um, Lions just lost, I believe, 28-14. to 14. Yeah, so pretty much for this game going in, I was pretty concerned because I didn't think we were, we were going to be able to run the ball because the Seattle Seahawks have been able to stop the run this year. And a lot of that has to do with their linebackers. I mean, Bobby Wagner and KJ Wright, every time you run the ball, they're pretty much they're pretty much at the line contesting your offensive line on every single play. And that's pretty much what happened. Um, our, you know, Maybe our running back would be able to make one guy miss, but then Bobby Wagner would be right there. Um, we pretty much weren't able to run the ball because they have such good linebackers. Um, and that's something that I was really concerned about going into this game because the Seattle Seahawks have very good linebackers. And one more thing I was really concerned about going into this game was the pass rush. Um, I mean, it looks like Deion Jones is starting to play a lot better than he did when he was playing for the Dolphins. I, I don't know if the Dolphins cut him after drafting him in the first round or if they traded him to the Seahawks. I can't really remember. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's starting to play like a pretty good player. And he was in the Lions' backfield a lot, chasing Stafford around. He had to... You know, a lot of times he had to step up in the pocket or, you know, try to spin out of him. Um, but he was putting a lot of pressure on Stafford. I don't know how many times Stafford got sacked this game, but he was under pressure quite a bit. There's a lot of times he had to step out of the pocket early to, you know, get out of the way of these defensive linemen that were just pretty much coming at him. Um, and it looked like it was primarily on the edges. So, you know, that'd be our right tackle and our left tackle, you know, getting beat on the line pretty much. And... Um, yeah, when you have when you're able to send four guys like that and get to the quarterback within a few seconds, that's really good. That's why that's why we weren't really able to pass the ball after the first drive this game. And I know we scored that touchdown in the fourth quarter to make it a two possession game, but during the fourth quarter, um, when we were moving the ball, the Seattle Seahawks were pretty much running a, a cover two, like a really deep cover two. They were giving us all of those short passes to the running backs, I mean, they were pretty much letting us go down the field because they didn't want to give up the big play. And that corner there probably should have followed, probably, probably should have followed our receiver downfield. Um, and he didn't. He was looking for the flat. And Stafford did a really good job. That's a really good throw against the cover two. That's where you want to go is the corner of the end zone there. You know, that's a great throw. That's a great throw to make versus the cover two. So, you know, good job by Stafford there. But you know, when they were in their cover three and sending those four guys, they pretty much they pretty much stopped the offense, and we could not do anything for most of the game after after we after we found out that we can't run the ball. And I know there was a lot of Lions fans going into this game really expecting us to run the ball very consistently. Um, you know, but there's also a lot of Lions fans that don't really watch a lot of other teams in the NFL, um, particularly if they're you know not in the NFC North. A lot of a lot of Lions fans don't really like to think about or watch other teams. You know, and also, um, I thought Stafford did a really good job this game on offense. I think he did just about everything he could. Um, watching this game, he didn't really miss many passes. There was that one play on the goal line where he threw that interception. Probably should have not thrown it. Um, you know, it was a late pass to the outside versus his own coverage. There's pretty much always going to be someone in the flat there. Yeah, you know, and it looked like that guy was pretty much expecting us to run that play. Um, so, you know, that's a pass you don't want to make. But, you know, what else? What else can you do when you're getting there in four seconds, three seconds, with you know, a four-man pass rush? There's not a whole lot you can do as a quarterback um, versus zone coverage when they're getting to you that fast. Because zone coverage does a good job at covering all of those, you know, all of those short routes. You know, but like when you start to get maybe 15, 20 yards downfield with a receiver, it creates a gap between that receiver, you know, in the intermediate route. So that's what you want to attack with the zone coverage. But when you can get there with four guys, you're not going to have an opportunity to hit that inter intermediate route very often. Um, and that's why the Seattle Seahawks have stuck to their cover three, you know, throughout the past couple of years, even though they don't have Earl Thomas right now and Richard Sherman, they're still getting it done because because of their pass rush right now. Now it's more because of the pass rush. In the past, they had really good secondary, but I think it's starting to shift more towards the pass rush because they've done a really good job drafting and also acquiring pass rushers because, I mean, Deion Jones, I'm pretty sure they didn't give, give up anything to get him. So, 
you know, getting that, getting Deion Jones for the Seahawks is really upgraded their, really upgraded their pass rush quite a bit. And then another thing I really, um, I really want to talk about again is, you know, our pass defense. In the last video I talked about our pass defense is one of the things I was concerned about for sure. Um, even though we won versus the Dolphins by a good amount, I thought, I thought our pass defense wasn't good enough to win versus good teams. And this is exactly what happened. Um, when the Seattle Seahawks were passing the ball, they pretty much were attacking everybody except for Darius Slay. And that's what I was talking about in my last video. Um, our corners outside of Darius Slay are not really good. Um, and if you look at if you look at the touchdowns that the Seahawks had, it was it was Tease Tabor, it was Quandre Diggs, and it was Nevin Lawson getting beat in the end zone. Um, you know, and Tease Tabor, this game really got destroyed. Uh, there were a lot of a lot of big plays that uh, would have not happened if you had, you know, a, a better cornerback group. Um, and this is something that I was kind of hoping that would address with the trade, you know. And I was really excited about getting Damon Harrison, but, you know, if Tease Tabor and uh, Nevin Lawson and Quandre Diggs are going to keep lining up one-on-one -on -one versus other teams, you know, decent receivers, they're going to get beat. Um, and I know, you know, Nevin Lawson might be able to lock up a guy like Albert Wilson, but Albert Wilson would probably be the fifth receiver on the Lions. You know, when we play against teams that actually have good receivers, it's not going to happen, I don't think. Um, I think I think they're going to get big plays consistently in one-on-one -on -one situations, when, whether it's Tease Tabor, Nevin Lawson, or Quandre Diggs. I really like Quandre Diggs a lot, but he is a much better safety. But when he is lined up in the slot with no help over top, it's I think it's it's a nightmare situation. Unless you're on the goal line, you I don't think you ever want to do that because he does not have the speed to compete with receivers um, in man coverage, especially. You know, there's times when he lines up in the box and he makes really good plays, you know, but that's when he's playing zone and that's when he's, you know, that's when he's stopping the run. But when he's, when he's in man coverage versus receivers, he gets beat quite a bit. You know, with the acquisition of um, Damon Harrison, um, honestly, I watched, when I was watching this game, I was trying to watch him a lot, trying to see what was happening. Um, it looks like he does a pretty good job at holding two guys up at the line of scrimmage. And that's pretty much what he does. Um, but when you have other guys on the line of scrimmage that aren't nearly as strong or nearly as good, you know, other teams are going to be able to run the ball. And that's what the Seattle Seahawks were able to do this game. They ran the ball, I think, something like, I think it was like 160 yards, 170 yards. Um, but they pretty much were getting five, you know, four to six yards every time they ran the ball consistently. Their running backs were falling forward. Um, and there were a lot of times where David Har Damon Harrison was holding up the line. Um, and the linebacker shot the gap, but the linebacker pretty much got run over. Um, and Chris Carson was falling forward, you know, four or five yards. And, um, you know, that happened quite a bit. Um, and I guess, I mean, it's not that surprising because Jared Davis was, you know, very inconsistent um, versus the run. Versus the pass, he's actually gotten a lot better this year. But versus the run, he's definitely pretty inconsistent. You know, there's times when he shoots the gap and he makes the play in the backfield, but there's also times when he gets run over. Um, a lot of times on counter plays, they're able to get a big play as well. They a, the Seattle Seahawks ran a couple really good counter plays this game to get, you know, guys like Jared Davis out of position, and it worked pretty well. In that, uh, that fumble on the kickoff by Amir Abdullah, I mean, I know it's not really cool to just pick on a guy who's like, you know, barely on the roster and stuff, but like Amir Abdullah has been on this team for so long and I don't understand why why he would still be on the team because like there aren't many kick returners that consistently fumble the ball, you know, and you know, that's kind of an issue that Amir Abdullah has had his whole entire career is fumbling the ball. Um, now, I'm not sure, but I think that was the drive where we actually stopped him on the goal line, which is really good, um, especially with that penalty. You know, they pretty much had a touchdown, and then they got taken away, you know, with, uh, I think it was Christian Jones was covering him in the back of the end zone, and he pretty much pushed the tight end out of bounds. Um, I don't know if that's what he was intending to do, but he pushed him out of bounds, and basically that makes it legal touching. And then as soon as that guy touches the ball, um, it's basically a loss of downs. So, you know, that's pretty good that um, that happened, because if it didn't happen, this game might have been, you know, way way out of proportion um this game might have been a huge blowout if that hadn't happened 
And also, um, you know, our defense did get pretty pretty destroyed in the first three quarters. Um, you know, Seattle Seahawks were pretty much able to run the ball consistently and pass the ball, getting big plays, you know, every other play it seemed like. But in the fourth quarter, the defense definitely tightened up a lot. Um, and maybe that's because the Seattle Seahawks were trying to be more, um, you know, trying to take less chances, trying to be uh, more safe with the ball and run the ball more in the inside. But, um, yeah, this, the def- our defense for the Lions definitely did a really good job in the fourth quarter um, and getting off off the field on third down. I think there was at least one third and one that we stopped them um, in the backfield. And, you know, that's really good uh, because – that puts our offense in a situation where we can go win the game. You know, if we had gotten a touchdown in the fourth quarter with Stafford through that interception, if we had actually scored there, you know, there's a pretty good chance that we might actually win this game. But um, overall, I really do think Stafford did a really good job just because of the pass rush this game. There really really wasn't a whole lot more he could have done. You know, I thought there were a couple of times when he could have just taken off, you know, maybe gotten a couple yards. But, you know, if you do that, you might get hit. Might as well just throw the ball away. You know, pretty frustrating game for us Lions fans here because we really needed to win this game, I think. Um, looking at the rest of our division right now, it's a very tight division race. And um, if the Packers, I don't think the Packers will beat the Rams this week. But if they did, that would pretty much... That would pretty much put us in a really bad, really bad situation going forward because if we lose to the Rams and the Packers win versus the Rams, that puts the Packers two games ahead, I believe. Because, yeah. So, I mean, honestly, that's you know that's pretty rough. And um, looking at the rest of the NFC, especially because we lost this game, um, we're looking at other teams like the Panthers probably for a wild card, like the Seahawks for a wild card. Obviously, they got the head-to-head now. Um, and another team that might be in there with a wild card would be like the Cowboys or maybe even the Redskins. It could also be the Eagles, too. There's a lot of teams right now that are, you know, 3-4 and four or 4-3 four or going into this week. And that's why this game was so important for us to win. Um, it's very important for the Lions to win every game we can going forward. Because I do not think the Lions will make it to the playoffs unless we win the division. Because looking at the rest of this wild card race, I don't think... I don't know how, honestly, I don't know how many other Lions fans are really watching other teams, but the Panthers look really good, um, and so do the Saints. I, I mean, I'm assuming that the Saints would just win their division, but, um, I mean, if the Saints don't win their division, they would definitely get the wild card, you know, and then looking at the NFC East with the Cowboys, Redskins, and Eagles, one of those teams is going to have a really good chance of getting into the wild card if they're close to 10 wins and um you know looking at the seahawks too you know if the seahawks beat the rams there's a very good chance the seahawks might actually might actually knock off the rams and take that number one spot because i think right now i think right now the seahawks are four and two or four and one yeah it's four and two for sure because they were look they're through the stat up there during the game so the seahawks right now are four and two and you know if they beat the rams there's a good chance they might they might actually take that division lead, which means the Lions would be competing with the Rams for the division. I mean, which means the Lions would be competing with the Rams for the wild card. So the Rams, if the Lions lose to the Rams, there's really no chance we'd make the wild card, I think, in that scenario. And I'm pretty sure the Lions are not going to beat the Rams. So overall, I do think um, this game was incredibly important for the Lions. Um, It's pretty disappointing to see a loss here. Especially when our offense had a chance there to, you know, go out and win the game or at least put us in a position to win the game. You know, it's really frustrating because, you know, we've been waiting for quite a while to, you know, see a team go win the game that they're supposed to. Um, Going into this game, I was hoping the Lions would win. Um, And if I was betting on this game, I probably would have bet the Lions to win by like three points because I do think the Seattle Seahawks are a very good team, especially on defense with those linebackers. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'm not that surprised with the way they played, though. Um, you know, looking at the rest of this NFC, it's going to be very tough going forward for the Lions to make the playoffs. You know, when it comes to whether I believe this team is a playoff team, um, I do think the Lions are a team that could make the playoffs most years. But I think this year, it's just the division's really going to be really competitive, probably more competitive than last year. Last year was an incredibly difficult year for the wild card. 
And I do think I do think this year there's gonna be a, there's probably gonna be two wild card teams with eleven or ten wins. There's just such a tight race. There's really no other way for it to end. Going to going into next week now the Lions are three and four. You know that's pretty. You know that puts us in a pretty bad spot when a lot of those teams are now gonna be you know. And looking at the rest of the division, looking at the rest of the NFC, things are very competitive. And looking at the rest of our division, I do think um, if we do you know if we do win out versus division obviously we would make the playoffs as the division leader but um but you know I, i'm really hoping there's a chance but um yeah i mean if we don't win the division this year it's pretty much not going to happen for playoffs um you know and yeah i guess looking forward for the lions looks like we play against the playing against the vikings next week which is interesting um because that's a game that's uh that's the game I'm probably most worried about as a Lions fan going to play at the Vikings because their receivers and, you know, just thinking about what they might do with, you know, playing against our cornerbacks outside of Darius Slay. The Vikings have a very good receiving core, probably one of the best in the NFL. A lot of teams, a lot of, um, a lot of people in the media actually think they have maybe the best receiving core in the NFL. Um, and I know a lot of Lions fans are like, wait, wait, wait. We have three guys that are really good. Um, you know what? I do think the Lions probably have the deepest receiving core. But when it comes to the top two guys, I don't think there's another another team that comes close to the Vikings. I, I mean, Adam Thielen has been unstoppable this year. And he was pretty much unstoppable last year as well. Yeah, going into next week, don't know what don't know what this team's going to be looking like. Especially against those receivers. It's going to be very interesting. You know... The Vikings haven't been been able to really run the ball when uh, Dalvin Cook has been out a lot of times. But, um, you know, I do think Latavius Murray is a pretty good player. Their other running back. And, yeah, guys, I think that's going to wrap up my uh, podcast for the Detroit Lions versus the Seattle Seahawks here. Um, episode 2. We're going to be doing this every Sunday after Lions games. Um, and hopefully I'm going to find a way to do this on the Thanksgiving ga- game as well. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. But overall, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, go ahead and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, or YouTube, whatever you like to use. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and have a good day.